Good evening. Let's all stand. Good to have everyone here. Uh, we want to continue to uh, pray for the situation in the Ukraine, also uh, the situation in Turkey and Syria. And uh, uh, every week I get an update from Convoy of Hope, and uh, they're just working and working and working. And so we need to keep praying for all of them, that God's going to help them. And and so many in our church who need prayer, I uh, tried to contact Ludine James today. Her husband was at the point of passing away, and so we want to pray for her, pray for her family, and so many others. So let's pray. Let's welcome Holy Spirit. Let's pray for our youth and our children's ministry, Spanish ministry, all the things that are going on there. So let's pray together right now. Father. We just come right now in Jesus' name and Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. And uh, Lord, we do pray for our children's ministry. We pray, uh, God, you'll be with them, our youth, our Spanish ministry, the nursery, all those who are working. Uh, we pray for the production that's starting Sunday night with Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. We pray for your grace. We pray for your mercy. We pray for souls to be saved. We pray for the people of Turkey and Syria and the Ukraine, Lord, that you'll be with them. So many displaced, so many hurting, so many uh, grieving because of the loss of a loved one. So we pray you'll be with them. And so, Lord, be, be with us tonight. Uh, Lord, we need your presence. We need your power. We need Holy Spirit to come and to minister to each one of us. And so, Lord, we just thank you in advance for everything you're going to do. So come, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing and let's worship the Lord.
ways.
You know, as we were singing that song, some scripture came to mind. In the 17th chapter of uh, John, Jesus prayed to be glorified, and they prayed for his disciples. Then he prayed for all believers. He said, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Hallelujah to the word of God the love of the Lord. There's nothing that compares to his love. You know, I like in scripture where it says, talks about unity in the body. You've heard that message many, many times from Pastor Rick, how important it is to be of one heart and one mind, to know that Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. He set the captives free. You know, sometimes because of circumstances and situations that we may be confronted with, just know that God is always with us, no matter what we're going through, to handle each and every need that we have, no matter how big or how small. And love is the operative word. It's so nice when we come in, when I come into the house of the Lord and greet as many as I can and just sense the love that you have because that's what it's all about, brotherly love and unity that God has granted us. And who are we not to share in that love with others? And Lord, we just come before you in your mighty name. We thank you for that love, O oh God. We thank you for your healing hand upon us, what you've done for us, O oh God. Yes, you were glorified. And Lord, we stand in awe of you. In every aspect of our lives, we commit into your hands, Lord. And Lord, I pray of those that are listening online that may have needs and the needs that are represented here. We commit each and every one to you, God. We not only trust you, but we also believe in you, that you are the miracle worker. You're the way maker, that all things are possible in and through you. And Lord, we're going to stand confident in your word that it will be done. And in many instances, it has been done. You perform many, many miracles in each one of our lives, Lord. If we were to take a testimony from each one here, we probably, it would probably take a long time to do it. You've done so much for us, Lord. We thank you that we can call upon the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for others that need a touch from the Lord, those that are local uh, impatient, uh, Louise Dykes, Stanley Lacey, who's doing better. Louise, hopefully they've stabilized her. We lift up upcoming procedure people, oh God, Becky Dunn, David Owsley, who had a, a stint this day, and we just pray for that it was successful and he's doing good. We lift up Pastor Dwayne, who just uh, went through some eye, uh, eye procedure that he'll get clarity in his eyes, Lord Bob Menzi. We continue to touch those that are recovering patients, uh, Dean Heiberger and Pastor Joseph as he goes up to Gainesville on Friday, that you'll be with him. Faith Kugler, she's had a very, very rough week, a rough month, and even longer than that. And we just pray, oh God, as they're running these tests, Lord, that they'll be favorable. And thank you for David Heights, the report that he gave me tonight, 
all the testing that he has done, every one of them were favorable, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we lift up those that need a healing of cancer. Betty Heiberger, Seal Rivets, John Gilligan, Linda Coldiron, Linda Kimes, Phil Johnson, Sue Myers, and Thomas Roditz. Touch their bodies, O oh God. Lord, move like never before in these situations. And Lord, we're standing in a gap for each and every one. And Lord, we don't take lightly that task that we have to continue to pray for them. And Lord, we lift up others that need a, a special healing from you. We pray that you'll continue to strengthen Ann and Tony Scott and uh, David and, and Mary Oosley. Uh, Mary's had many back issues. We pray for healing for her. And our Mita's friends, uh, Dick and Nancy, pray that you'll move in their hearts and their bodies as well. And Lord, we thank you for Eugene James, Lord, and what he's going through, oh God. The prognosis doesn't look good, as we've heard from Ludine, but Lord, we rest in your hands, Lord, that you'll do what needs to be done in that situation. We're praying for a healing. And Lord, we continue to lift up our Brother Bass for his leg and Marlene Plant that went through a procedure. Pray for a healing for her. And Lord, I, we continue to pray, oh God, for Life Church, La Vida Church, and Life Church Villages. Lord, we've done your part, oh God, and we're going to continue to pray and believe and trust, Lord. And Lord, as we're getting ready for this dynamic drama, heaven's gates and hell's flames. Lord, we want to see an outpouring of your spirit. We want to see unsaved people come in and, and turn their lives and hearts over to you, Lord. We want to continue to pray that situation, O oh God, that you'll just lead them in. Many, many invitations have been extended, and we just pray that you'll just place on their hearts to want to be a, a part to come and see that drama. And, Lord, we do pray for everything that's taken place in this church with regards to it. There's many, many people that are involved, and we just pray that your hand would be upon each one, O oh God, and they can be effective in the roles that are giving to them, and even when it comes to uh, building the stage and everything else that's involved, Lord, just continue to, we look to you, O oh God, for your guidance and direction. Lord, we continue to lift up Israel and pray that your hand would continue to be on that country, Lord, and as Pastor was praying, we want to continue to pray for Ukraine and what's going on there. And also the Russian people as well, Lord. There's many that don't believe in the war that's, that's taking place. And we just pray that they'll look to you. And Turkey and, and Syria with the earthquakes, Lord. And we just pray that you'll bring peace and comfort to those that have been displaced. And we thank you for the, the aid that's being given to them, Lord. We give you praise for that. And Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord the time with you, and we just pray for the rest of our service, O oh God, everything that takes place will be done to bring glory to your name as pastor comes forth with the word. Bless our evening. We thank you for it. Give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Pastor Rick. Thank you. Just an update on Trisha's mom, Lu um, Mary Dykes, Louise Dykes. She is uh, back at her facility, so she's doing better. We are thankful for that. and uh, But we continue to pray for her and ask God for his blessings. And then just to update, anybody want to update on missions? Wow. This past Sunday was so incredible. Uh, as of right now, we're only about... Uh, $12,000 less than our total for all of last year. And so, amen. Which means, you know, that this first month, we are doing better than we've ever done in the first month uh, since I've been here. And so God has really blessed us. We believe the rest is going to come in. And uh, God's going to use you tonight. So if you need a faith promise card, we'll make sure that you get one. Uh, and then also, please be praying for uh, Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. Uh, God wants to do something great through that. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. And it takes a lot of witnessing and, and inviting people. Uh, so we encourage you to keep doing that. And uh, guys, if you want to go ahead and come forward so we can worship the Lord with our giving. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I had someone come up to me uh, yesterday that I have never talked to, never met before, and, uh, and just uh, quietly said, I am praying for you guys to have the greatest harvest of souls you've ever had. And then turned around and walked off. And I'm like, hey, 
I said, why don't you come and pray with us that the harvest of souls, you'll get to witness it and be there to pray for it. And she said, I want to, but I'll be on a cruise. She said, but we'll be praying for that. So we need to pray. And listen, if you see it one night, come back the other nights too and pray with us that that Holy Spirit will be here to move and touch hearts and lives. Let's, let's pray over this offering. Father, we just come right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we give you all the glory for what's happening with our faith promises for missions. Lord, it is your heart to reach the world with the gospel, the United States, plus all around the world. And so, Lord, just continue to uh, touch our hearts and help us to get uh, surpass our goal that we had last year. And Lord, to do even more. And so, Lord, we thank you. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. You can stand if you'd like to worship. so much what a beautiful song they were singing that song when I got saved in 1974 and so if you want to stand for the reading of the Word of God we're looking uh, tonight at we'll look at two places Proverbs 22 28 and then Deuteronomy uh, 19 uh, 14 and so and we're starting a new series uh, called Boundary Markers. You'll see that, uh, those words in one of these verses. And we're going to talk about how that we all need boundaries in our lives. Look at Proverbs twenty-two twenty-eight. It says, Do not remove the ancient landmark which your fathers have set. And then look at Deuteronomy 19.14. It says, when you arrive in the land, the, the Lord your God is giving you as a special possession. You must never steal anyone's land by moving the boundary markers your ancestors set up to mark their property. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, you speak to us through your word, and Lord, we uh, ask you tonight to speak to us. Those who are watching online, we pray that you'll speak to them, and Lord, help us to all see the boundaries in our lives that you have set that we need to follow. And Lord, we'll thank you for it. We'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So you may be seated. Seems like this is a little bit hot, a little bit loud, so if you want to turn it down just a little bit, uh, I don't want to blow anybody out of the building. And so uh, we're going to jump right into this. Point number one is this. We, and you can say amen uh, when I read my points tonight. It says we all need boundaries in our lives. We all need fences. We all need limitations set for us. Amen. We need that. Everyone needs that. 
And even though nowadays we don't have as many uh, noticeable boundaries as uh, we used to have uh, growing up, but we all still need spiritual and moral boundaries uh, set up in our lives. We need uh, that, and that's why the Word of God is so, so important. And uh, because of where Trish and I live, um, there's so many horses out there. There's so many, so, uh, so much cattle that are there. Uh, fences are absolutely necessary. You have to have fences there. And oh, what fun when a gate is left open or a fence broken down. When a, a, and I don't know if y'all know this, but I'm not a horse person. My wife and daughter are, and but. I'm, I'm not a horse person, and one day I was uh, home on a Wednesday studying and praying, and I look up from studying and praying, and the horses who were supposed to be in the fence were in the yard. And I'm like, ah. And I did like any man would do. I called Trish. I said, hey, what do I do? And, uh, and she's like, get some feed, crazy, and, you know, lead them back in. So as soon as I walked out there to give them feed, one took off running down the road. The other one ran this way, and I was like, yikes. How many of you believe fences and boundaries are important? And that day I really found out that they are absolutely important. And so, uh, you know, it, it, it's important that we understand that we need those boundaries in our lives just as well. Amen. Uh, and maybe there's a few of you here that can remember a, a day when there was a distinction between the church and the world, and it seems that those uh, fences or those boundaries are disappearing more and more uh, as time goes by. And and. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like the pendulum has swung the other direction where uh, the uh, evidence of boundaries are all but gone, uh, and the church has adopted its own political correctness, which is sad, that we, we can make up. And it's almost like we become uh, socialists with our situational ethics and thinking that each situation dictates its own uh, set of morals and stuff. Uh, but how many of you know that's not the way it works? That we have absolutes that are in our uh, lives. Listen to what John Hyde says. This, he was called Praying Hyde. He said, the most effective way to draw people to Christ is to look like Christ. Today's prayerless churches have become have come to believe the most effective way to draw the world to Christ is to, uh, looking like the world. He said that a long time ago, but it's still relevant. Uh, I agree with him uh, about what he says, but uh, it seems like we have graduated even further than that. Not only do we look like them, we live like them. We live just like them in almost all that we do. Uh, how many of you know being relevant is good? Being relevant and, and keeping up with what's going on in the world, keeping up with what's going on uh, in, the, in society. But if we indulge in the same things they do, where's the boundaries? Where's the fences that we need to have in our lives? Amen. I remember my son coming home very disillusioned uh, when he was, I think he was about 17, he had gone to a uh, Christian fellowship with some uh, people and that he considered to be very spiritual, be very uh, good people. And, uh, and they had a big party where a bunch of them came together. And, uh, and he, I mean, he was so upset. He says, when he got home, he says, uh, the, the three guys I was talking to were bragging about the last time they went and got drunk. And these are people that were involved in worship, involved in leading the church and doing stuff, not this church, but another church. And so he was just a little bit disillusioned uh, that there were not boundaries where he felt like 
that there should be. And so we want to be relevant, but we need to understand, uh, and, and, and I, I, I preached this one time years ago, and uh, eyebrows went up real quick. I said, we should be seeker sensitive. See, it got quiet, like just like it did then. But I think we should seek Holy Spirit and be sensitive to Holy Spirit. That's what I mean by that. And so uh, look at 1 Corinthians 9. Listen to Paul here, and uh, just to give you a heads up, it almost sounds like Paul is saying we should compromise to reach the lost. Listen to what he has to say. He says, even though I am free, a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under the law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring uh, to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles, I do not follow the Jewish law. I, too, live apart from the law so I can bring them to Christ. How many of you think it sounds like he's compromising? But listen to what he finishes saying. But I do not ignore the law of God. I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. In other words, he's saying, I've got boundaries in my life. He says, I do this to try to lead people to Christ. I do these things trying to, you know, be sensitive to people's needs. But one thing I'll never do is compromise the law of Christ. I will do what God tells me to do. He says, verse 22, when I'm with those who are weak, I share their weakness for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to save some, I do everything to spread the good news and to share in its blessings. So we all you know, want to relate to people. We want to be able to, to minister to people. We want, if somebody's suffering or hurting, we want to hurt with them. If they're rejoicing, we want to rejoice with them. But we, we try to find common ground with people uh, to lead them to Christ, but never compromising God's Word. Somebody say amen to that. Never compromising God's Word. And so uh, Paul said again, I obey the law of Christ. In other words, he says, I don't step over the fence. I stay within my boundaries. I, I love this story. I didn't love it at the time. But uh, our son Joshua uh, has always had a streak in him. You can call it whatever you want to. I've got a lot of names for it. But, uh, but I, I can remember us being out in the front yard when we lived right up here at Selfish Avenue. Not Selfish Avenue, but like a fish, Selfish Avenue. And, uh, and he, I, I noticed he kept getting closer and closer to the road. And I'm like, Josh, stay away from the road. How many of you know kids can give you the look? Like, I do whatever I want to. Yeah, and I tear your rear end up, too. Anybody old school here? Yeah. I was in high school before I realized the Board of Education was a group of people. I thought that was a board that all the teachers had for me. And, and they used it quite often. But I can remember Josh, and I, I don't think y'all could see it if I went up here where there's a difference in the color of the carpet. But where our driveway ended and the road started, he finally made his way right there. I said, don't you touch that road. I said, I mean it. If you touch that road. And so I looked away, and I kid you not. Let's see. Let me get up here so you can see me. He's watching me. He sees me turn away, and he goes. And I said, I saw that. He said, I didn't do nothing. And every time I'd turn away, he'd do like that. So I just kind of laid hands on him a little bit and tried to help him understand that that's not appropriate. How many of you know it's a temptation, it seems to be a temptation for us 
to step across that line. And we need to, you know, follow uh, the, the boundaries that God has set up. Look at point number two. When we move the boundary stone, we are trespassing, and trespassing is sin. Amen. Ephesians 2, 1 through 5, uh, Paul again here says, and you, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in, wh in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who uh, now works in the sons of disobedience, um, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy. Anybody glad God's rich in mercy? Oh, my goodness. Where would we be without the mercy of God? How many, how many of you glad there's a scripture that says his mercies are made new every day? Anybody besides me need those mercies every day? I need them every day in my life, he says. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. How many of you glad it was the grace of God that saved you and brought you out of darkness into light? And so we're all so blessed because of that. We were all dead in trespass trespasses and sin, and, and Jesus has set us free. So, so why is it? Why is it? It just seems to be something in our nature that we want to jump over the fence and end up in the pig pen again. It just seems like there, there's, you know, and, and I, I just got through talking to someone uh, about their son just a little while ago that it just uh, they were raised in church they went to church all the time they knew what's right or wrong but it's so hard for them to stay within those boundaries they always want to step out and we know what that's like we've got a son that has struggled with that uh, for years and so uh, fences or boundaries have been placed in our lives to keep us from going where we shouldn't go and keep us from doing what we shouldn't do. How many of you are glad there's traffic laws? I, it, I, I'm thankful. There was a time in my life I was very rebellious about that. I thought every uh, place that you took off and every place you stopped, was you were supposed to try to see how fast you could get going between those two places. And, and I drove like a, a maniac all the time. Thank God for His grace. Uh, that that protected me but just imagine just imagine if all of a sudden tomorrow they said we're suspending all traffic laws you can go through the red lights you can go run the stop signs you can how many of you believe that would be chaotic what's well, the same thing in the church if we suspend God's law it becomes chaos and so we have to understand that it's very important that you know, uh, what we do and where we go. Uh, listen to this, and I want to read it to make sure you understand what I'm saying. When you are where you shouldn't be, and you're doing what you shouldn't be doing, at a time you shouldn't be there, bad things happen. Why is it we're always surprised of what happens between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. in the morning? See there, even the babies agree with that. Listen, nobody needs to be out at 2 o'clock in the morning. You should be home. You should be doing what you're supposed to be doing. And if you're where you're supposed to be, there's a really good chance you're not going to get in trouble. So I, I, I heard someone say this the other day that uh, made me chuckle a little bit is that he he was talking about relationships and he said I know he says I know because I've heard it uh, ever since I've been a teenager uh, what women need in their life and he says I can give you that answer real quick and the guy said well what do they need he said security he said well how do you know that he said because every woman I approached at a bar would always yell security
I'm sure we have all heard that a few times. No, no. But anyway, bad joke. Let's move on. Fences or walls are there uh, to keep the enemy from getting uh, to us. And uh, how many of you think it may be important to have borders in countries? You go to any other country besides the United States, and you're going to have trouble getting into those countries because they have uh, border checks and all that kind of stuff. Why? Because they don't want people coming into those countries that are doing things that they should not be doing. And so boundaries are important. And let me just say this. That's not a political statement. That's just a common sense statement. Amen. So uh, God tells us uh, in his word not to be unequally yoked with, uh, with unbelievers, but yet we cross that line, and then people are constantly dealing with issues because of that. And so the, the borders are there. The, the, you know, the things are there. The boundaries are there for our good. It's important to understand that. Uh, Adam and Eve had, an, had incredible freedom in the garden. They had incredible freedom. They could pretty much do whatever they want, and they only had one fence. L- listen to one boundary, Genesis 2, 15 through 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So here's the point. If we step over those boundaries, we begin to die spiritually, which is not good for our walk with God, obviously, and so, uh, and, and so many people think God's trying to keep us from having fun, and God is trying to protect us, he, he, and he was so good, uh, he gave such privilege to Adam and Eve by uh, telling them, you can have everything in the garden you want, except this one thing, how many of you know that one thing drives us crazy? if we can't have it. And so it, it, we, we need to understand that. We go after that one thing, that one relationship or whatever, and his word uh, has fences that's, that are there to protect us from messing up and messing ourselves up. And, so, and, and, and when we mess up, it messes up other people. Romans 14, 7, For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. So, so everything we do affects somebody else. Just imagine Adam and Eve realizing what their trespass did to the whole world. I think they're hiding in heaven because they're afraid everybody that's coming is going to come after them when they get there. Let me just share these couple of verses, and I need to hurry. It's so easy to just keep going. A uh, couple of verses that maybe you have never thought about them in the idea of boundaries. Uh, these are the same verses in different uh, translations. Uh, Proverbs twenty nine eighteen, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Uh, the same verse in the New King James Version, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. Uh, uh, the New Living Translation, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. So, so you see, the fence or the boundary is vision, revelation, and divine guidance. What happens when people don't take those boundaries and live by them? People perish, they run wild, and they cast off restraint. We need boundaries in our lives. I said we need boundaries in our lives. We need that protection. So look at point number three. So how are these boundaries or fences established in our lives? And so 
Uh, Proverbs 28, 19 again says we must have vision, we must have revelation, we must have divine guidance. This is uh, what God has given us to give us those boundaries and the, that insight into what we're supposed to be doing. And, uh, and it is not always that we don't know what to do uh, or that we don't have the revelation or guidance or vision. Uh, so many times we just want to do our own thing better move on so where do we find this divine guidance where do we find these fences look at a we get our boundaries through our parents especially if they're godly christians somebody say amen to that proverbs 22 6 train a, a, a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not turn from it how many of you trusting that to bring your kids back to god a lot of us are, are doing the same thing and so look at b we get our boundaries from the Word of God and our study of it. Psalms 119, 10 and 11. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So the Word of God is like a boundary. It's like a protection as I read it every day. It keeps me safe in God's presence. Look at C. We get our boundaries from being filled with the Holy Spirit. John 16, verses 5 through 8. Uh, Jesus speaking here. But now I'm going away to the one who sent me, and not uh, one of you is asking me where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I go away, then he, I, I will send him to you. Listen to what Holy Spirit does. Tell me if these are not boundaries and fences. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of God's righteousness and of coming judgment. We need Holy Spirit in our lives for the boundaries that we need. Amen. D, we get our boundaries by the conviction of Holy Spirit. I, I did a study on this one time. Uh, a danger we need to watch out for is first-generation believers have conviction born out of prayer. Without prayer, second-generation believers look at the convictions as traditions. Well, that was all right for you, but it's not good for me. Then third-generation believers, uh, uh, their tradition becomes legalism, and it's used to beat people over the head uh, trying to keep church people within the fences. That's why you have certain denominations that, that uh, it's all legalistic, and you better have your hair cut this way. You better have your sleeves down to here. You women better wear dresses so long you trip on them when you walk and, and all that stuff. They have these unrealistic boundaries and things like that. So here's five steps real quick. I got three minutes, and I can do that. Five steps to keep us in the boundaries. Look at this. The first one is conversion. This is the gate. We must become new creatures in Christ. We must be changed. Somebody say amen to that. That's the opening. To contrition, we must be willing to humble ourselves. If you want to be humble, study the cross. If you can't find humility studying the cross of Christ, then you're all messed up. Three, consumption. We must tarry until he comes and wait until we're filled with Holy Spirit power. We need to consume what God has for us. Four, conviction. We must allow Holy Spirit to convict, convict us of sin, of righteousness, and of Jesus' soon coming and his judgment. So it's so important. And then number five, confidence. We must have confidence in God that he will keep us from crossing the fence or falling. I didn't put this in there, but Pastor, do you have a verse for that? I love the last verse of the book of Jude. It's only one chapter. It says, to him who is able to keep you from falling. And then it says, give him all the glory and all the praise. How many of you believe Jesus is able to keep us from falling? But our job is to stay in the boundaries, stay in the, you know, the, the fences that he has given us. And when we do, we're blessed.
Let's all stand. Look at that. I did it. I did it. That's a lot of stuff to cover real fast. I want you to bow your head, close your eyes. No one looking around just for a moment. Those of you watching online, do the same. Uh, maybe you're watching tonight or you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Rick, I realize I'm stepping outside those boundaries. I realize that I'm not doing what I should be doing according to the Word of God. Not according to, thus says Pastor Rick, but according to what the Word of God says. Not even what the Assemblies of God says. It's what the Word of God says. The boundaries that God has set up. Maybe you say, I, I'm, I'm living in a way I shouldn't be living. Maybe you don't even know the Lord. You haven't been converted yet. You haven't found the Lord as Savior. Listen, that's the first step. That is the first step in our lives to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. And if you're watching online or if you're here tonight, you say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. I need him so much. That's the beginning of coming into that safety, that, that, those boundaries that will keep you safe all your life. And maybe you're here and you say, I'm, I'm a believer, but I, I need to be careful. I need to be cautious because sometimes I step outside those boundaries. I need God to help me and to convict me and to convince me of his righteousness and of judgment to come. I need Holy Spirit in my life. If that's you, if you say, for any of that, if you say, Pastor Rick, pray for me, I want you to raise your hand just real, real high so we can include you in this prayer. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you. Three men already raised their hand. Thank you so much for your courage to say, I want God to help me. You can put your hands right back down. I want everyone to pray this prayer. And if you'll pray this prayer and you're sincere, God will touch you. God will help you. God will minister to you. We all need the protection of the Lord. And that's living within the boundaries of his word. Pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, I need you. I need you in my life. Come and save me. Wash away my sins. Fill me with Holy Spirit. Let your blood wash over me. Help me to be obedient to what your word says. Come into my life and change me forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great praise. Hallelujah. We're going to invite our prayer partners to come quickly. Uh, to uh, be here to pray with you if you need prayer. Those three men that raised your hand, if you want prayer, we would love the privilege to be able to pray with you and to uh, minister to you. Uh, that's what we're here for. Amen? Amen. And please, please don't forget about the production. Be praying, even fasting, and saying, God, give us souls. How many of you want to see these altars filled with people receiving Christ. And I want them totally transformed. And I want them in church. Amen. Extend your right hand toward your pastor. Lord bless us as we go tonight. Let your hand be upon us. Lord we thank you for what you're going to do. This Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, Lord we pray for a great harvest of souls. Lord help us to be in those boundaries but help us to get others inside those boundaries of salvation lord that they can make it to heaven with us and so lord we thank you we praise you go with us help us to be your missionaries help us to be your evangelists in jesus name amen amen make sure you get some tickets out in the foyer and pass them out for heaven's gates and hell's flames god bless